Adding a new set of aftermarket wheels to your off-road vehicle is one of the coolest things you can do to transform the look and personalize it. However, if you buy the wheels just for their looks and you don't look at some very important specifications, you could mess up the performance on and off-road of your vehicle. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you some important things that you need to take a look at before you buy that set of pretty looking wheels. Jeez, I forgot how heavy that wheel is. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today we're talking all about wheels and some of the important specifications you need to consider before you buy that really cool set of aftermarket wheels. There's a lot of things that you need to factor in because depending on what type of wheel you get could really affect the performance of your off-road vehicle. Now, what I wanna do first is just kind of briefly go through the three sets of wheels that I have here because I know I'm gonna get asked. And so up top here, I have a bronze method race wheel, which is a 701. This is what I'm running on my 392. Down here, I've got the KMC Machete. This is a beadlock wheel. This is what I'm running on the JK. I love these wheels, but they are heavy. And then down here is the wheels that originally came on my Jeep Wrangler 392. Those are the Mopar performance wheels and they are a beadlock capable wheel and these are now mounted on my wife's Jeep. And while these wheels are all made to go on a Jeep, they have very different specifications and different purposes for use, which we will dive deeper into in this video. But I think the first thing that we should talk about when trying to decide what kind of wheel to get for your vehicle is the material. And the two biggest things we're gonna talk about are steel and aluminum. Now all three of these wheels are aluminum and the reason I like aluminum is because it's lighter weight. It's much lighter than steel. Two, there's a lot of different design options. You have all kinds of choices, whereas a steel wheel, it's pretty limited. Although I do like the look of an old classic steel wheel. The downfall with aluminum is one, it's much more expensive than a steel wheel. And two, if you take a hard hit on an aluminum wheel, well, even though today's modern aluminum wheels are pretty durable, the chances of cracking it are still possible. Whereas in a steel wheel, if you take a hard hit, well, you might be able to do a trail repair. You can get out of the hammer and fix it or weld it. The benefit of having a steel wheel is just that, plus they are gonna be cheaper. The problem with the steel wheel is it's heavy, and that's gonna affect your acceleration and your braking performance. Honestly, I think if I was gonna do a trip all the way across Australia, a steel wheel is probably the way to go. But for a daily driver, a weekend warrior vehicle, somebody that's gonna be out from time to time like I am, I like aluminum plus. They just look good and aesthetics matter. And speaking of aesthetics, let's talk about the finish options you have for a wheel. Now, powder coating is the one you're gonna see most often. And this wheel is powder coated bronze and this one here has a black ring and then the titanium center. The good thing about powder coating is that it's really, really durable. So if you're out on the rocks and the mud, scratch it up against bushes, these are gonna hold up really well. The only thing I've found is when you do actually scratch through the powder coat trying to touch these up sometimes it's not the easiest thing to do trying to find a paint that matches painted wheels are another option but they're not very common and they're not going to be as durable as a powder coating and then there's chrome wheels and you know back in the 70s everybody had chrome wheels on their off-road vehicle i have them on my 1974 cherokee and they look really cool it's just not a big option anymore it's not something that's kind of the in thing for today's modern off-road vehicles Polished wheels, however, I really like because if I scratch these up, one, the aluminum's gonna scratch, but you're not gonna see a big scratch in the paint. So I really like these on a rock crawler style vehicle because if I scuff these up, it's no big deal. I just keep on moving. 
Now, before you go and pull the stock wheels off of your vehicle and throw on a cool set like this, there's one thing to really consider, and that is the OEM wheels that came on your vehicle were engineered and designed to perform with that vehicle suspension and driveline. And so when you pull those off and you put a new set on that maybe has a different offset or backspacing or different size and weight, you're gonna change the vehicle a little bit. It may perform just slightly different. You may not notice it but there's probably going to be a little bit of difference in the way the vehicle performs it's just something to consider now if you are doing something like lifting your vehicle or you want to put bigger tires on there you're probably gonna have to make that compromise and get a different type of wheel that maybe is not the same specifications as the stock one just something to consider all right before we dive into talking about all the sizes and the specs on a wheel i want to invite you guys to go over and check out trailrecon.com. We've got all kinds of great gear and equipment to outfit your next adventure. Plus, we've got some awesome blog articles. So if you just want to kick back on the couch, have a little peace and quiet, just do a little reading, go check out trailrecon.com. I think there's some great articles over there you'll enjoy. Plus, again, lots of great gear. So hope to see you over there. All right, let's talk about some of the basics here. Let's talk about wheel size. All three of these wheels are 17 inch wheels, which is pretty standard on most off-road vehicles today and Jeeps. You can go larger, but 17 is the most common size. And why is that? Well, way back when, 15 inch used to be the standard size on a Jeep or an off-road vehicle. You throw a 33 inch tire on there and that was a good wheel to sidewall combination. Today's modern vehicles, the brakes have gotten bigger, the brake calipers have gotten bigger, so they needed more room to fit those brakes in there and so they had to make the wheel larger. So that's why 17 inches is pretty standard today. That, however, uh, does not mean anything is compromised because we're now throwing 35s and 39s and 42s on there. So you could still go a larger wheel but still have plenty of rubber and sidewall to get out there and give you lots of grip. Now, when you do go larger tires, well, the next thing you need to think about is the width of the wheel. And this wheel right here is eight and a half inches wide. And it's important when you are deciding which wheel to get is to look at the tires you're gonna be putting on there. The tire manufacturer will specify a recommended width of the rim. And so right here, this is a 39 inch tire, but it's also 13 and a half inches and so this KMC wheel is nine inches long to accommodate that. Whereas this is a 35, a 12.5 inch width. And this wheel right here is an eight inch wheel. And so that's, again, this is what came standard on the 392. So just take that into consideration when you are figuring out the width of the wheel, take a look at what tires you're gonna be running and what they recommend. All right, now I want to bring you in a little closer because we're going to talk about some of the smaller specifications on a wheel. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the lug pattern. And so typically on a Jeep, the wheel lug pattern is five by five. And so what does that mean? Well, that means that I have five lugs. And if I was to draw an imaginary circle through the center of all those lug holes and then measure the diameter of that circle, it would be five inches, giving us that other five. So five by five. Now, the funny thing is, is that if you flip this wheel around and you look at the stamping in there, it's actually a five by 127 because they go by millimeter. So while you may see five by five, you may also see it in metric. So make sure you pay close attention to that. The other thing about the lugs here is this is what's called lug centric. So when I mount this wheel up on the Jeep and I put it over those lug nuts, then I put the lug bolt on there. When I tighten that down, the wheel is able to be centered over those lugs because this lug nut and the inside of this wheel are tapered. And so when you clamp those together, it centers everything. Now, there are some wheels that are what's called hub centric, which means the center hub bore of the wheel is what centers that 
wheel on the vehicle. And so you may need to pay attention to what your bore size is in here. There are some vehicles and some wheels that are both hub centric and lug centric. You just need to know what your specifications are. Most modern aftermarket wheels are going to be lug centric. Now I want to flip the wheel around and we need to talk about something that is very important to pay close attention to when you're buying an aftermarket wheel and that is offset and backspacing. First, let's talk about this backside mounting face in the center of the wheel. So this is where the wheel attaches to the vehicle. If you were to draw a line that goes right through the plane of this wheel at the face of this surface, it would come dead center on this wheel specifically because this wheel has what's called a zero millimeter offset, meaning that surface is right dead center in the wheel. Now, on the KMC wheel that I was showing you earlier, that has a negative 38 millimeter offset, which means that mounting plate is further back on the wheel, pushing that wheel out. On the Mopar wheel, it has a positive 12 millimeter offset, which means it's, that surface is closer to the front of the wheel. Why does that all matter? Well, depending on where you need that tire to sit is going to matter a lot on that offset. So offset is important to note, but the one measurement that a lot of folks talk about is backspacing, and that is the distance from that mounting surface to the back of the wheel. And so if I'm going to take that measurement on this wheel, specifically it's 4.4 inches of backspacing. If you're running a larger tire, you're going to need clearance from a lot of your suspension components and you're going to have to find a wheel that's got a little bit less backspacing. Typically a stock wheel is going to have five to five and a half inches of backspacing. So that center line is pushed in further. So you've got a lot more room back here because that keeps that wheel tucked up underneath the fender and closer to the suspension components. But when we start going bigger tires, we need to push that wheel and that tire out a little further. The disadvantage with that is when you do that, you start to create more leverage on some components, specifically the ball joints and the bearings. And so you're going to get more wear and tear on those. On that KMC wheel, that one has 3.5 inches of backspacing. So it's really pushed out. Plus I'm running a spacer, which that's a conversation for another day. But that wheel and tire combo is pushed out pretty far. And so I can expect that I need to upgrade, which I've already done, some of those components that are going to get worn out. So knowing what your wheels backspacing is and what you need for your specific application is very important. All right, whew, got all that math out of the way. Uh, now that we've talked about a lot of the specifics, let's just talk about some general things that I think are important to consider when you're choosing the wheels. First of all is bead locks versus a traditional wheel. There's pros and cons to both, and I think we could have a whole long discussion about that, but this is a bead lock, and the reason I like a bead lock is because it gives me a lot more peace of mind that that bead is not gonna pop off the wheel because you have that ring that clamps on the outside of the tire bead, and that's gonna allow me to air way down and get a really big footprint when I'm out on the rocks and it also gives me a lot of strength and durability. The problem with the beadlock is they're heavy. This wheel is a lot heavier than both of these. This wheel here is a traditional wheel with a twist. This wheel here has ribs in here that hold that bead into place. It's a very unique thing that Method does, and I think that's very cool. I've aired these tires down on these wheels pretty low, and I have not had any problems yet. Uh, so far, so good. So a traditional wheel like this is pretty nice. The Mopar wheel, this is a traditional mounted wheel, but it's beadlock capable. So that black ring you see around the wheel, you can have it unmounted and then put that ring on the outside bead and then it can run as a beadlock wheel. Pros and cons to all of that, uh, obviously I'm using all three of these tires for different applications. 
The other thing to consider is the valve stem. So this one has a pretty traditional valve stem placement. There is a little bit of a cup there that kind of protects it, uh, but it does still stick out a little bit. And one thing to mention about valve stems, I am a huge proponent of rubber versus metal valve stems. I actually went to a tire shop once and I went to go pick up my tires and they put metal valve stems on there. I'm like, guys, that's not gonna work for me. I want the rubber because they're flexible and if I hit it on a rock or whatnot, it's going to be flexible and not take a beating. Whereas a metal one, you could bend or crack that. Uh, this Mopar wheel has a really a uh, good protection cup right around that valve stem. It almost covers the entire thing. Uh, this wheel, it's covered by the outside ring, but this one actually has two valve stems, uh, and that allows you to use a gauge so you can see your tire pressure when you're airing up or airing down. It's usually for race applications. I don't actually ever use that second one, but that is a good little feature to have. And I talked a little bit about weight, and that is so important when you're talking about your wheel and tire combination. This 39 inch tire with this KMC wheel is a heavy beast. I would not put this on my wife's Jeep because we would wear out those components and probably bend or break an axle pretty easily. But on the JK, it's built to handle these. So be careful about how much weight with your wheel and tire combination. The other thing we didn't mention is the weight rating of the wheels. For Jeeps and smaller vehicles, off-road vehicles it's not that big a deal but most of these wheels have anywhere from 2,500 to 3,500 pounds of rating if you're going to be throwing these on a full-size truck or a big massive overland vehicle that's something you're definitely going to have to pay attention to because you don't want to put a lightweight uh, wheel on a full-size heavyweight vehicle that you're going to build out so you need to keep that into consideration We've talked about a lot in this video, guys, and hopefully you've gotten some good information out of this. This is, a, this is a good conversation to have, and I think one that should be ongoing. There's pros and cons to a lot of the things we do here. There's pros and cons to all of these wheels. I would like to hear from you. What type of wheel are you running that you prefer and why? Let us know down in the comments. I'd love to uh, hear that and, and continue this discussion. I think it's a discussion that's ongoing. I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me today. Be sure to check us out over at trailrecon.com. Until next time, We'll see you in the next video.